When biomechanics gurus first started talking about the best way to load optimal exercises, this was the order. Cables, premium machines, dumbbells, smith machines, and then barbells. Alignment was prioritized, thus classifying barbells as the worst choice given their fixed restrictiveness. However, these same people were simultaneously raving about the importance of stability for recruiting high threshold motor units, which hugely affects the hypertrophic stimulus. In fact, it wasn't uncommon for them to suggest that stability was more important than the movement pattern itself. Now, upon hearing this, I immediately spotted a contradiction and pointed that out way back in 2021, two years before the so-called experts would inevitably 180 their stance. Nowadays, their new order, particularly for compound movements, is premium machines, Smith machines, barbells or cables, which are interchanged depending for chest or back, with dumbbells in last place. So then, how is it possible that dumbbells went from a solid rank down to the absolute bottom of the list? To put it simply, they're the most unstable, and this should have been obvious from day one. It's also why no one does cable presses anymore. Any seasoned lifter could have told you that barbells were stable enough, even though free weighted. Therefore, all these swarms of influencers who quickly joined the bandwagon, screaming to stop barbell benching, it's not optimal as you cannot fully add up the humerus with the precise trajectory of the pectoral fibers, utilize dumbbells instead, have now returned to the good old power rack or Smith machine. How fascinating. And I'll tell you, I had a feeling it would come down to this, as the truth always comes around. Like, if Julius Maddox could raw bench 796, then barbells should be stable for 99% of us. And even if you argue, well, he's the best bencher in the world and enhance, stop referencing outliers, Alex. It doesn't change the fact that benching, say, 315 provides a reasonable absolute load that won't feel unstable. The same goes for 405. Yeah, look how few guys press that, even on a stable Smith machine. So even with the most stable setups, it's not like you can machine press 440 and bench 365. No, 9 out of 10 times it's going to be exactly the same or within a 10 to 50% difference, which usually relates to range of motion differences, not stability. Interestingly, this is also the difference between a specialty bar and a straight bar, which further proves my point. And you know what? Disregarding absolute load, a proper setup with good form makes barbells even stabler. Even the quality of modern barbells affect this. Stiff with minimal whip and tight sleeves? Ha! Huh, that's smooth. Then with a heavy duty bench being 12 to 14 inches wide, you are golden. Being locked in without bouncing? Trust me, stability should never, ever limit you. Anyone who claims otherwise is making up excuses, or they're weak and want to hide their straight bar performance to establish some sort of credibility. However, we can't really say the same for heavy dumbbells. Only lighter weights truly solve the problem. And even there, you'll grow out of them, as doing so really doesn't take that long. At the same time, you could have two guys who can dumbbell press very similar amounts, but their barbell presses are vastly different. This is not due to skill, but rather limitations in progressing with certain weight ranges. When you're close to maxing out the dumbbell stack, even adding 10 pounds is a psychotic jump and does not scale nicely. So going back to our main example of barbell benching, and keep in mind, I'll be talking a lot about presses today. Can't cover every exercise or else this video is going to be an hour long. It's an overloadable, relatively brute force, basic movement that can be perfected within a year of legit training. To say that stability is a limiting factor is utterly absurd. Powerlifters, bench specialists, and home gym enthusiasts all find the idea laughable. In reality, it's not significantly different from a Smith machine, which might be marginally superior on paper when solely discussing stability. But truthfully, you can interchange them and won't really notice a big visual difference in the long term. For these two, I'd argue it's really about preference or what feels best on the joints with maybe some muscle biasing differences. Regardless, biomechanics gurus seem unfazed by the Smith machine being a fixed straight bar, despite no converging effect or an emphasis on squeezing, which was their primary criticism of the Olympic bar. Funny how that works. And to top it off, those aspects are least important for hypertrophy. The belief that perfect muscular functions must sync with a balanced resistance profile in order to be optimal is not supported by recent data. Emphasizing the mid to lengthened position combined with an exercise that offers both stability and enough room for progression trumps all. 
What a revelation. It's sad that a speculative viewpoint prevailed for so long, while those who were in the trenches and generally cared about the community were shouting from the rooftops that something wasn't adding up. We held our stance, not due to being old school purists unwilling to adapt, but due to the application of critical thinking and our years of experience lifting heavy barbells. Now that these influencers have finally gained first-hand experience, they've realized the same truth that we did. So it's crazy how the cable and dumbbell stacks are less populated now for presses and pull downs, whereas earlier this year, you usually waited. Imagine all the elaborate MacGyvering of bringing over benches, weighing them down, often doing your lateral stuff for a little out of benefit, meticulous angle setting and more, all for paradoxically less stability. As usual, the bench bros are vindicated even during Leroy Colbert's time, when asked about the best chest exercises, he always mentioned barbell benching. The best exercise to build your chest, bench press. We use Olympic bars. You'll be surprised how quick the strength comes up. It's a powerful muscle if it's used right. Never with dumbbells, even though they were very much around at the time and he did incorporate them. Actually, he used to curl 90 pound dumbbells. So for isolation movements, he was a big fan. And that is also my preference, like for curls and tricep extensions. And back then they weren't as credited after a certain level. And also keep in mind that Leroy Colbert was also a four or five bencher. Plus, this was a general trend in the silver era where they mostly had barbells and dumbbells. So you gotta ask, was the barbells dominance purely a result of enjoyment and popularity? Of course not. There's always one winner in a 1v1. These pioneers favored what produced the best results. And the more time passes, the more I realize how profound their insights and wisdom were. Whenever I second doubt myself, I go back to old school recommendations and I'll tell you their wisdom has never failed me. Not once. So my personal experience. While I've maxed out the dumbbell stack and still highly recommend them, in fact, I have very serious strength goals and smart lifters should include both. It doesn't change the fact that most of my exercises involve barbells. My training videos tell the entire story, including when I'm at the gym. Games determine the rationale behind this choice. Like I have access to premium pain dumbbells. There's reasons beyond mere preference. And it's important to clarify that I'm not a barbell purist. I even plan on making an opposing video where I argue for dumbbells. That said, if I were forced to choose between barbell pressing and dumbbell pressing, gun to my head, I'd opt for the barbell due to its significantly enhanced ability. There's no competition there. For example, I've managed 315 for 10 on the barbell bench press, which, if translated to dumbbells, would equate to repping around 150 pounds each hand. Honestly, I doubt I could even do that. 140s tops for flat and 120s on the incline is about the best I can expect. And that's with the bilateral deficit. So let's say 280 pounds total weight. I can lift much more than that with my arch nemesis bar, which is even deeper range of motion. So how come we lift less compared to the same or comparable movement pattern and range of motion? Again, the answer lies in stability. With dumbbells, there's a clear down regulation and force production, explaining their low ranking from before. Now, of course, this is exercise and muscle dependent, like for rowing, arm exercises, delt raises, etc. you shouldn't have a problem. But for the big compound movements, which is how you'll build most of your physique, in general, we can say that the barbell is more stable and thus a better choice. Wasn't it obvious in that many strong lifters plateaued for years within the 100 to 120 range for dumbbell presses, even though the total load on barbell presses across various angles was easily surpassed? Heck, what if those dumbbells are old and rally or not maintained well, plus don't have good dimensions or worse, don't go heavy enough for your needs? It's actually a common issue. Either way, doesn't it make sense that even bodybuilders struggle beyond the 130 range? The numbers aren't that different from natties, even though general strength is nowhere near comparable. Consider how even an unstable exercise like weighted dips can exceed the total load of an optimized dumbbell press, whether on a decline or with partial reps. The fact is, when the arms are loaded independently with free weights, stability suffers a lot. It's also why weighted bar dips are better than ring dips for hypertrophy, even though those can better stretch and squeeze your pecs stability over function. This is what I'm trying to tell you. 
you should still include both, but going back to dumbbells, the stronger you get, no matter what you try to manipulate, you'll eventually conclude with the top lift is all figured out that barbells are by far the stablest implement of the free weighted world and have far more potential for progressive overload. So it's reasonable to state that barbells will beautifully serve the vast majority of lifters for all stages of training. Given their progressibility, accessibility, simplicity, versatility, effectiveness, and global standardization. Now, a very special announcement. As I've been wearing this entire video, the Leonidas Strong Tee with Barbell Apparel is finally here. Thanks to your support, I finally have a badass design that we can all wear together. It's gritty, berserk style with the artwork, with a Spartan helmet, spears, warrior colors, and of course, features the premium athletic fit. I absolutely love how the Leonidas Strong Tee turned out, and right now, it's my favorite piece to wear. So get yours today before they sell out, link in the description box, and please tag me so I can feature you in my stories. Also, the 365 day guarantee always applies, so you can quickly get back to crushing your training, this time in Greek Spartan style. Anyway, bringing it down to lower body training, it's not controversial to suggest that dumbbells are highly limiting and inefficient. This is because the best exercises are unilateral with a high coordination demand. And often, we lack heavy enough dumbbells to truly provide a comparable stimulus to squat and deadlift variations. Practically speaking, you're confined to lunges and split squats for quads and dumbbell RDLs for the posterior chain. Which begs the question, how heavy can you realistically go before loading problems arise? Just to say, back in 2019, I had already pushed the dumbbell stack to its limit on most exercises, including when performed as a pre-exhaust superset with higher reps of 20. There wasn't much more I could do, and leg growth started slowing down big time until I started squatting again and going heavier on hip hinges, which I couldn't efficiently do at the gym with dumbbells. So after switching, my strength and size exploded, just like a novice lifter. I can list countless examples, but my good morning weight increased from 135 times 10 to 315 times 10. Squat from low 400s to 507. Trap bar deadlift from 700 times 1 to 700 times 5. Sumo deadlift from 565 to 600. RDL from barely touching 4 place to repping it 15 times, then 4.5 place for 9 reps. Basically, those gym dumbbells weren't sufficiently heavy for next level lower body training. It was enough for aesthetics and advanced lower body strength, but certainly not elite. You'd need between 130 to 180 pound dumbbells to really get massive legs. And the thing is, with a barbell, you can still do those previously mentioned exercises, but now with more stability. Like a Zercher split squat, front split squat, having the bar on your back, all barbell RDLs, including the trap bar, which is similar to the dumbbell, the leg muscles are engaged in the same manner, but now with more loading options. Excluding the sissy squat, what other feasible bilateral exercises are there? Goblet squats? Squatting with two heavy dumbbells with elevated heels? Come on, we all know those options aren't efficient. Opting for a barbell is the more sensible choice, and it's what's most common if not using machines. Bear in mind that the big bilateral exercises will, by default, be more stable considering how strong your legs are. And if your counter argument is, well, I'll just do high reps with dumbbells one leg at a time for a good stimulus fatigue ratio. My response is, can't you do the same with a barbell, but with both legs and now have even greater stability without having to do double the work, which can be cardiovascularly punishing and maybe cause more fatigue on a set per set basis. You're really going to do 15 to 20 reps per leg with no rest on a Bulgarian split squat. Slow and controlled with pausing to get more out of less weight, but easily taking two to three minutes per set given the extra time and attention instead of just doing a quad bias barbell squat. Okay, enjoy the extra pain, I guess. That's on you. You'll absolutely get comparable results, but at the same time, you can just stick to a moderate rep range or the same on bilateral leg work, which is more directed for pure hypertrophy. Probably less chance of form breakdown as well. So, Barbells or machines are worth emphasizing for the majority of your primary leg work. 
dumbbells should be reserved for accessories, usually as a belt squat replacement. So your third leg exercise or even skipped, considering that unilateral work can still be performed without them. Remember, the independent loading of your legs has nothing to do with the independent loading of your hands, unlike with upper body training. Hence, it's clear that barbells offer greater versatility for lower body training. It's hard to argue against this unless someone struggles with squats, similar to those who either avoid leg day or don't train their legs intensely. I understand that perspective very well because I use the same reasons for years. Ultimately, the choice comes down to whether you want to maximize efficiency or not. Now, let's address resistance profiles. Dumbbells can be quite challenging to modify unless your body is positioned in weird ways, like laying sideways on a bench. So they typically emphasize the way to stretch, which is phenomenal and in fact, preferable. However, know that if you did want to get more mid to short work in, including accommodating resistance is 100% more cumbersome here and honestly, not workable. Bands and chains ideally attach onto the sleeves of a barbell secured by band pegs or a power rack. This is how you achieve perfect positioning and form remains unobstructed since unlike dumbbells, you're not confined to literally attaching the resistance at your grip and point, which could also be unstable. And you don't want that. Same if you do it while laying on a band, that's the worst. Heck, I'll even point out that calisthenics makes it easy to change strength curves because of the belt. But with dumbbells, it feels so off and nobody does this, including West Side athletes. That should tell you the entire story. So you'll often see people doing reverse banded hack squats, banded Smith machine work, any band or chain barbell squat or deadlift, because it just works perfectly on a long bar where this extra resistance is not in your way and is easiest to set up. But you'll rarely, if ever, see it with dumbbells, even though there could be potential benefits. It's minus one point. Now, for those who say, Aren't you contradicting yourself because earlier you stated that the length position was king? I would say no, because I still believe in reducing overuse by modifying joint angles. And that's something I'm very vocal about. Not that doing so is superior for hypertrophy, but if most of your exercises are length and bias, then it's fine if you aren't, which in a free weighted context, barbells give you that extra customization. It's all about filling in the gaps and keep in mind, you don't want more muscle damage if there's already a lot. So mixing in different resistance profiles can help net recovery or be useful for those who want to do more volume. So logically, either use a prime fitness machine, a rarity in most gyms, or attach bands and chains to barbells or other compatible machines. And then speaking of dumbbell range of motion, if you want to cut things back to further reduce overuse, there's really only two options. Either perform half reps, decline or floor stuff, but that's limited, or use bigger dumbbells to cut back range of motion, but it won't be standardized and can vary from one heavy dumbbell to another, depending on the jumps or brand. But with a barbell, the typical 29 millimeter shaft doesn't change. And if range of motion adjustments are necessary, this is where a board block or pins can be used. So there's never any manual partials, which are inherently more dangerous and make it harder to replicate on a rep per rep basis, or if trying to micro adjust for long-term tracking purposes. Whereas with a barbell, I can pinpoint the precise position to set my pins and know the bench blocks number being half, one, or two. This accuracy is important, particularly for conjugate enjoyers or for anyone who likes higher exercise selection and targeting weak points. And speaking of strength, in terms of testing, know that there will never be a dumbbell pressing competition unless it's the circus dumbbell, which is standardized by over a hundred years and is executed in a specific push pressing manner. Competitive lifts predominantly involve barbells with clear, easy to follow rules. Doesn't matter where you are in the world, there's no longer any ambiguity about how strong someone is, especially for brute force lifts that are very muscle dependent like the bench press. And that's why the age old question, how much you bench bro, is still number one in real life and social media. And it's gonna stay that way for a long time. While it's not something you should fixate on, if you did wanna know one of your idols benches, you'll get an answer and you can compare yourself to other elite natties if you so desire, because it's also the least technical lift of the big three. So saying strength is strength truly applies here. Now, one more thing I'll say about the restrictiveness of barbells. It amazes me how some trainers still claim this considering the numerous grip variations at your disposal. It need not always involve placing your pinkies on the rings. There's the option of close grip, 
the reverse grip or using a simple neutral grip with a Swiss bar. Also, the camera bar to increase range of motion a bit more than dumbbells with or without multi-grips. And like I just talked about, manipulating strength curves and dead stop ranges of motion with boards or pins, making barbell work 100% customizable for all relevant needs and for all structures. Anyone suggesting otherwise is a charlatan, omitting easy fixes and or lacks an understanding or creativity for the various ways to introduce variability, which isn't complicated in the slightest. As for safety considerations, if you're not benching in a power rack or station with safety pins, then dumbbells are technically safer since you can throw them and reach true momentary muscular failure with zero worries. However, the one trade-off is that you must kick them into position and that motion itself can cause injuries or strains in the long term, particularly in the shoulders. So it's not the pressing from the bottom that's a problem, but the initial jerkiness. So if you have a modern unracking system or those pedals that do the lift off for you, then you're blessed. Otherwise, the help of a spotter or just favoring barbells to safely land on the pins has a slight advantage, especially if you misgroove and don't want to overstretch in the bottom. So I'd argue there is a little risk here. Lastly, for those who only want a big bench press, I'd like to highlight something that might shock you. On May 25th, 2021, I successfully benched 405 for the first time. By far, my proudest achievement. Now, what's interesting is that October 15 of 2019, Mark the last instance where I did a dumbbell pressing workout or even used dumbbells at all in my programming. I transitioned to home only training and shortly after global events unfolded, preventing me from even going to gym for a long time. As a result, I refrained from buying a dumbbell set, which got pricier and instead made the most out of my available equipment, which included an Olympic bar, a Swiss bar, bands, chains, and a dip bar. I didn't even own an adjustable bench, just flat. This means my routine only featured flat benching variations, floor pressing variations, and overhead press variations. So 100% flat and 100% vertical, exclusively with barbells and occasionally incorporating weighted dips. So I documented the workouts and shared most of my one rep maxes and back offsets on Instagram, which are still up by the way. And within that two year time span, I elevated my bench press from slightly over three and a half plates to four plates. And here lies my major point. Barbells alone brought me to the pinnacle of bench bro performance. And this was the best and fastest progress I'd ever experienced even up to the present day. So with that in mind, could dumbbells have really changed everything? In my sincere opinion, I doubt they would have sped up my progress or altered the ultimate outcome. In pursuit of my rather ambitious goal, I never felt restricted by their absence, and the results speak for themselves. It was a smooth journey, and even though I was conjugate, the fact that it was barbell based improved the overall specificity of training. That matters. And going back to dumbbell carryover, here's another thing I want to point out. Last year, I ordered 20 10 pound plates in order to do dumbbell pressing at home. When the set finally arrived, I decided to test my dumbbell shoulder press and got 100 pounds for five reps, full range of motion touching the shoulders, despite being my first attempt at going heavy since 2019, which was only 90 pounds at the time. It was all possible with the AD press and classic overhead press. So just a little something to mention, which should be encouraging for anyone who believes that having dumbbells is absolutely necessary, especially in a home gym context. If space, budget constraints, or personal preference steers you away from using them, it's less of a concern than you think. When you look at big picture thinking, it makes sense why having a power rack, Olympic bar, and weight plates is so valuable. You can do most of the best exercises with these pieces. Therefore, if you struggle to make progress despite having such a setup, then you're the one to blame. Not because the barbell isn't optimal, bro. No, get jacked with a barbell and you'll get jacked with anything. As just another tool in the toolbox that happens to tick all the right boxes. So that's it. I'm done rambling and hope that my message was clear. One more time, I love dumbbells to death. I personally own three sets and want to hit new PRs on them. Plus, I'll always recommend dumbbells to anyone who has access to a quality pair, especially for smaller exercise. But to say they're necessary is flat out false. And I don't agree that they're generally superior to barbells if we examine all the factors that make exercises great. This is not coming from a place of bias, as expensive prime fitness machines are probably better than barbells, okay? But they're also 
five to 10 grand each and unavailable for almost everyone, including me. Thus, I'm going to continue recommending barbells due to their practicality alone. And I know for a flaming fact that all you watching this have a lot more juice to squeeze. Truth is, none of us are too good for the barbell. It's forever valid. And for anyone who disagrees, let's see your counter arguments down below.